<clears throat> so, you know, do we, just, uh, there, so? do we just clear our throats at the same yeah, time? sure did. Run that back. Uh, very interesting that, and I understand, rightfully so, Bills Mafia, Hashtag Nation, everybody's really, really jacked up on the Buffalo Bills. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew! I'm going to do like a spider monkey! I'm not drinking iced coffee anymore. <laughs> Is that the, that's the takeaway here? That's the takeaway here. After drinking a monster. Um, point being. The improvements that the Buffalo Bills have made to their roster in the offseason was definitely significant. I don't think we can look past the improvements that the other teams in the AFC East specifically have made. Yeah, and I look at it, and I don't think they improved enough. So I'm, I'm well, super curious to have this debate. And that's fine, but the it's not that I would disagree with you on the fact of they're not there yet. You know what I mean? They may be where the Bills were last year, certain teams. Mm -hmm. You know, they have the talent, but they don't have the cohesiveness yet. Bills are a year or two ahead of that. I understand that. But the talent. I'm talking purely on talent that they have. Um, <laughs> your boy might be the offensive coordinator by week six in, in New York, Jim Bob Cooter. Damn He's currently right. the running backs coach there. Jim Bob. Jim, Jim Bob Gerb. Jim Bob Gerb. I love that. Dude, Matt Staff, side note, Matt Stafford enjoyed some of the best years of his career with Jim Bob Cooter. Yep. I'm sure did. Can we just? I know D Wagon is uh, is a Lions fan. I know he's on our channel all the time, but he's he's oh. a he's a Lions fan. Okay. And uh, he he mentioned on one of the one of the last couple live streams, he, he made a comment about how it's a shame that Matt Stafford has toiled his career away for the Lions. But listen, contract extensions don't sign themselves. You knew what you were getting yourself into. That's it. You, contract extensions don't sign themselves. I don't feel bad for players that end up on bad teams when they sign contract extensions. You get drafted by a bad team, all right. But you sign that contract extension, that's on you. I can't remember who put it out there, but there was a meme that said, <clears throat> at one point the Detroit Tigers drafted Patrick Mahomes. <clears throat> Did you ever see – do you hear about this? At no. Some, at some point – I think the Detroit Lions, no, not Detroit, Detroit Tigers drafted Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Obviously, he never went. Right. But the meme was the Detroit Tigers drafted more Super Bowl winning quarterbacks than the Detroit Lions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Russell Wilson got traded to the Yankees. He did? I thought he got drafted by the A's, didn't he? Well, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. But yeah. um, he, his rights got traded to the Yankees, so now he goes to spring training with the Yankees every year. <laughs> to, to be that athletic. I, I know, mean, right? No, I, yeah, there's so few of us. Yeah. <laughs> you know how hard it is to pull double duty for a golf and bowling team? I just don't think you understand. I don't understand the struggle. I really don't. I, I'll never understand your pain. <laughs> you missed this, didn't you? I did a little bit. <laughs> All right, so how do we want to handle this first? Do we want to do we want to go over the other teams versus Buffalo? Like, because I've got all I've got all depth charts. I got Miami, the Jets, and New England. We know Buffalo's depth charts. Yeah, I really think that. that if you go through any uh, if you go through any channel, podcast, broadcast, uh, Bills BuffaloBills.com, anything like that, it's been beat up the additions to the Bills. Mm -hmm. We know that everyone knows that everyone yeah. part of hashtag Nation has have. Either we've done it or some other outlet have educated them on the additions. We don't need to be beat that up. I think for our sake and for the nation's sake, we should highlight who they're going to be going against because maybe a lot of people don't pay attention to other rosters. So I'm fully good to go over. I want to start with Miami, though. Okay. You yeah, yeah. Miami up first? Yep. Let's go. Some misconceptions about people that come from the Belichick tree. For years, people thought they were getting Belichick when they get yep. someone off the Belichick tree. Yep. And we've said many times here. That's not how it goes. That's not how it goes. You do not get – Belichick teaches you what you know, not what he knows. That's the thing. So while Flores may have done some things there, you remember when Flores left, New England had one of the best defenses in the sure league did. last year. And sure the defensive player of the year. 
You can argue that in Buffalo all day, but what's fact is fact. It's a fact is fact. So, that being said, I like Flores as a coach. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be successful, a successful coach. Given the short time that he's been able to turn his roster around and his, his, his image, I like it. But let's get to, down to brass tacks. Okay, so uh, on the offensive side of the football, Miami's returning a majority of their wide receivers. Albert Wilson, Devontae Parker, uh, Preston Williams, Alan Hearns is new. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Gusecki, like, we, we've been waiting for Gusecki to show up. And then against the Bills, look great. He did. Look great. Did look, they had some. They got some size at the wide receiver position. Yeah, those That's are all big kids. Them. Yeah, those yes. are all big kids. It's really going to yeah. benefit them because then whoever's at quarterback, whether it's Fitz, Tua, or Rosen, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> tried to slide that one by me. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're going to have some targets, some big targets yeah. to throw at, which is great. Which is something that everyone pined for Buffalo to get, but now big time. you yeah. got you got guys who, in your image, in mm -hmm. Paul's image. You got to get separation. Bills yeah. have that, right? Whereas Miami has guys that create their own separation if they can't get in and out of cuts. Physical, yes. yeah, they're physical receivers. Yes. Yeah, that's so right. you can't discount them. That's three guys, four guys you name that are big dudes, right? Yeah, Miami's a team that's built to out muscle other uh, secondaries. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, <clears throat> which you can't win with talent, you win with size. Absolutely, no question. And that's and that's just that's that is an old adage, and that is a hundred percent true in football. That's well, fine. you can't beat in talent; you just beat in size. Yes. That's it. Yeah, and the, and the thing about it, they've they've made improvements to their line as well. Mm -hmm. They have made significant improvements to the line. Uh, I mean, I'm not really there with their line. So our lads has uh, Julian Davenport at left tackle, Eric Flowers at left guard. Hmm. Flowers, what did he do? He was a tackle. Slid him down yeah, the guard. Well, what a, what a surprise. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ted Karras at center, uh, Michael Dieter at right guard, and Jesse Davis at right tackle. So I, it's not a great line. Schmay. Schmay. Yeah, Schmay. Schmay. Uh, their running back room is significantly different than oh, last year. Oh, I loved it. So, uh, very different. So they've added Matt Breida, who I love. You love Matt, Matt Breida. It breaks my heart that he's in Miami. Yeah, I love but... Matt Breida. Uh, along with Jordan Howard, <clears throat> uh, because Kalen Blodge just isn't very good. But you have a three-headed monster today. Yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> That's right. I mean, you went into last year with uh, Balage and Drake. Now you have those other two many Howard and uh, yeah, um, boy, Rita. Yep, boy, don't they look stupid? They look so good. Getting rid of Drake, they look stupid. Well, now they don't because of who they got back. I, I get. I it. understand. I you, maybe it was a different system. Maybe it was. I don't know. Maybe it was you know locker room presence. Maybe it was some. I don't know. I really don't know. But. They made up for what their mistake. Yeah, but it cost them some cash. I don't sure. Oh that. yeah, they so, sure did. Um, sure. I did. love the running back room. The <laughs> running backs are very physical and can catch the ball. Mm -hmm. Their wide receivers, like you said, they're going to out physical you. Their line really isn't there yet, but that's right. why you draft a mobile quarterback. Yep. Um, Fitz, Fitz can get the ball out of his hands and into guys. Um, you got Chan Gailey there now. Yep. It's reuniting with Fitz, number one. Bang. Number two, it's a fun offense. Yeah. It's a really fun Well, offense. and also Miami has one running back that a lot of people won't know about. His name's Miles Gaskin. He's Ooh. from Washington. Yes. And for those of you who are uh, members of Hashtag Nation uh, that got to see the preview or the um, the breakdown of um, Trey that I did. Yes. Um, Trey Adams, the Trey left Adams. tackle for the Bills, uh, undrafted free agent. Uh, Gaskins was the running back for that team. So you saw a lot of Gaskin in yep. that highlight reel. Yep. Um, he's, he's a really solid player. Very, very Chan Gailey-esque. Yes. Very Chan Gailey-esque yes. player. Well, it's going to be fun. That's I, I, I like that that team is going to look very fun this year. Yeah. I mean, on the offensive side of the football, formidable. En there's enough skill position players to, to make you pay attention yeah, to Miami. It's, it's not but their that, line isn't great. Yes, yes. Well, and they're, they're going to have to circumvent that with their new quarterback. Yep. Or fits because you're not going to confuse him. No. Moving over to the defensive side of the ball, they've made some significant improvements. In one, if you call Shaq Lawson an improvement. Igben Agony, <laughs> their corner, the new corner they drafted in the first round, Igben Agony. Their secondary, I love their secondary. I know you do. Getting rid of Minka Fitzpatrick was not smart. It's probably the defensive version, to a, a greater degree, of Drake getting rid of him. However, their return... It, they, that, they, they did a good job flipping that. They did a good job flipping didn't that. They get, didn't they get another Bama corner or safety from that? So, well... Didn't they draft another safety uh, to replace him? 
Brandon Jones? No. No. Oh, but they're they're two corners, which is the kind of the silly part about this. Yeah. And just just goes to show you how um, Flores wants to run his defense. He wants to run his defense through his corners. That's why yeah. you have the two highest paid corners in the league. You're, yeah. you're spending thirty one million dollars on just your cornerbacks, mm-hmm. yeah. two starting corners. So you got Jones, you got uh, Xavier Howard. Right. They're you trying have to push Eric everything Rowe. The, they're trying to push everything into the middle yes. of the field. You got Rowe, mm-hmm. who up he, in New England he followed Flores down. Yep. And at safeties, they have some two really solid safeties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Bobby McCann's good. Yes. I've got, I think Bobby McCann's a good safety. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's their defensive line that's I just don't, I'm not in love with, right? So their D-line is Shaq Lawson, Devin, uh, Gautichuk, I, that's how you pronounce well, it. they got name. Wilkins, too. Yeah, the Christian Wilkins. Yeah, well, they're running a 3-4. Okay. Which is, I mean, makes sense to bring in Shaq Lawson. He's really, it does. He's really, he's really a 3-4 really D. Um but your linebacker group is not good. It's not good. Well, you plan on running nickel <laughs> a lot. That's why you yeah. overload your safeties and your secondary. Right. Yeah. And and, and as well as they should. Sounds right? familiar. I know. Doesn't it? <laughs> you don't need a little linebacker. No. no, we don't need that. All right. So here's. I mean, if you want to compare secondaries against Buffalo, I'm down to compare secondaries. But the defensive line, it's no competition. The Bills have a significantly better linebacker group and defensive line than Miami. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Mm -hmm. When it comes to offensive side of the football, they have a much more experienced running back room. Significantly more experienced. So I'm actually going to give the edge to Miami here and the running back room. Okay. Let's I'm not going to give it to him in the wide receiver room, though, because, again, those guys yes. are dependent on being physical, and refs can take that away from you in a game. You get you walk into a game and the refs start calling everything. The thing that makes you a dominant wide receiver room is gone now, mm-hmm. right? So I, I'm going to give the edge to Buffalo there, and, and, of course, you have to give the edge of quarterback to Buffalo. I mean, Ryan Fitzpatrick slash Tua versus Josh Allen. I don't think, well, com- the, I don't think there's a comparison. Depends if you talk to ESPN. <clears throat> oh, Christ. Let's not go down that rabbit hole again. That rabbit hole was so dirty. Yeah, God. Um, and then offensive line, that's Buffalo. That's Buffalo. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Compare, comparing to Buffalo, um, Buffalo is the better team mm-hmm. overall, I think, with experience and cohesiveness and a right. bunch of other areas. However... I think the key that I was trying, the point I was trying to get across and the point you're trying to get across is that it's not like Miami's going to be a pushover. No. And be like, well, they're, they're just going to roll them 28 to I 7. Think, yeah, I, mean? I think it's reasonable to say that it is very possible for Miami to split with Buffalo this season. Mm-hmm. It, it really just depends on what happens in at the quarterback position. On that day. <laughs> on that day. And what do the linebackers look like for Miami? Because yeah. it, that's a big question mark for them is that mm-hmm. linebacker group. Um, so it, it really just depends on what that looks like. Well, if they but, play I mean, Van Noy's there now in Miami too. Yeah. And he and he was a thorn in the Bills' side for yes. you know for for a few seasons, and it, now he's down in Miami. You got a lot of hybrid, <clears throat> you got a lot of hybrids, I think, on that Miami team as yep. far as the defense. So yep. they could throw a bunch of different looks at you that you're not really accustomed to. When you see a guy rolling up to the line who's a strong safety, but now he's playing a little linebacker position, right. and he comes off the edge. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of things could be thrown at you that you're not used to. Mm-hmm. And with a third-year quarterback in Josh Allen um, and, and Brian Dable, I hope they can diagnose what they need to do to yeah. find some of the unexpected blitzes and the pressures that they have. Yeah, it's not going to be as easy as some other teams, mm-hmm. you know, based off personnel, what they're, mm-hmm. what kind, you know, what kind of, of base they're in. 